Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. And I'm Sam. And today we're having a look at the Templeton Rye Barrel Strength. Alrighty, today we're doing the Templeton Rye. Um, bit of a difficult one to talk about. Um, just because it's a little bit, well, it's very controversial. Uh, the whiskey itself in this glass we actually are quite fond of. It's yeah. it's pretty nice. Punchy, but it's it's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, the brand itself, Templeton, is... Um, a bit sketchy. Full of <laughs> is probably like the best, <laughs> the best way to uh, kind of explain it. Uh, if you look into their past, their history, their uh, kind of just like uh, things that have come up in the news about them, um, they're a bit sketchy. They are... Uh, They've got their origin story and their whiskey background and the whiskey story and this and that. Uh, and if you read it, it is uh, all pretty much not real and just mm. made up. Uh, yeah. Now, I disclaimer, this is what we've read, you know, vaguely on the internet and we're not claiming that these people are liars and stuff. So just a disclaimer so we don't get sued. Uh, but from what we've heard from other news sources and stuff, there's been a lot of people being quite angry with uh, their kind of marketing uh, language and stuff. They're yeah. claiming things. Uh, they're not open about the, like they, they claim like an old, uh, they use the original old uh, family recipe from ages ago by some dude mm -hmm. uh, and the dude's recipe is uh, legally, if it was used now, wouldn't legally be actually allowed to be called right whiskey at all yeah. anyway. So it's obviously not that because mm -hmm. they use like sugar and stuff in the recipe. Yeah. Uh, also, after you go through their, you know, sift through the millennia of just crap about like the, just their origins and their little, you know, blurb and stuff, uh, you realize um, with a little bit of close inspection that they don't even make their own whiskey and it's sourced, <laughs> which yeah. is not a problem in itself as a basic thing. Sourcing has been around as long as whiskey has been uh, and is huge and it's just no one has an issue with it. Yeah. But they completely, like, can, they don't tell you that. They hide it completely. Yeah. Uh, they pretend they make it and all that kind of stuff and that does really kind of rub people up the wrong way. Basically, this is the cast strength version, barrel strength. It's 57.9 ABV, 115.8 yeah. proof. Uh, it is 100% rye, oh sorry, 95% rye. Um, and it is made by MGP. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Midwestern Grain Products, the, uh, the king pins in that area, yeah. making whiskey. Uh, and as just kind of like a quick little thing, if you're not sure, if you can't fight, figure out, it's not obvious uh, when you're buying a whiskey, if you want to figure out if the people selling it or the label on it is the people who actually made it, um, just look on the label at the neck or in the smallest print they can possibly do. It'll be, it'll say, but this one in, uh, for example, it says produced and bottled by Templeton. It's, it's strong. It's, it's like green. Yeah. It's green and hot. It tastes like vegetation. Tree sap. It smells like vegetation. Huh? Tree sap. Yeah, it's yeah, it's got that heavy tree sap note, mm. but like it's weird. It's got this caramelized like brown sugar to it, but it's so outshined by this just intense barrel impact. It's so barrel bitter. It's like a Booker's or something. Yeah. <clears throat> green tea, heavy green tea. You know what I'm cloves. getting? You know when you've like going through a burnt burnt out area especially in australia with the eucalypts I'm yeah, getting yeah that kind of fire. yeah i'm getting that on yeah the yeah like the the kind of like yeah yeah i know you so you've i think you said that before about it it's like um walking through like the it's like charred vegetation forest yeah. and then having like you can smell the eucalyptus that's had its eucalyptus oil like cooked out of the tree and mm. it's kind of like in the air um yeah. and it's got that kind of like toasted charred uh note to it as well yeah yeah um yeah no i definitely agree with that it's got a lot of eucalyptus oh, jesus that burnt my <laughs> yeah it's hot it is really am hot. i getting black tea as well or is that just i'm getting like a lot of green, green tea, tea and yeah. there's going to be black tea with that i think i think there's like a percentage of black tea in green tea anyway i think it's all going to be much of a muchness but mm. definitely that tea herbal kind of like nose to it It's yeah, just the green, the green tree sap. It's the There's green notes yeah. and the barrel bitterness, like that bitterness that kind of just like sucks the moisture out yeah. of your mouth. Uh, and then all that leaves on the on the on the palate is just like that pure ethanol, and it like really mm. does kind of like 
increase in uh, temperature. As it like kind of evaporates in my mouth, I'm getting more vanilla and brown sugar. Like some more There's kind of nuanced sweet. sweetness in the background, but There's definitely up front it's just wood impact, wood impact. The sweetness in there is nice, but it is um, overshadowed by those kind of mm. harsh green uh, yeah. and barrel bitterness. I'm just getting a lot of barrel bitterness for me. Um, I'm getting black pepper now on the nose. <clears throat> getting tons of tea, especially, or getting it now, especially more black tea on the aftertaste, like that dry finish. It's like you've just kind of like sucked on a tea bag. A tea bag. Wet, wet yeah. tea bag. Um, yeah, super dry. Um, I like the sweetness in there. Would be nice if there were more dark fruity notes in there because it is very. Mm. Everything about it is uh, quite consistently bright and uh, punchy. Yeah. Like it could do with some cool kind of dark notes, like if I was getting chocolate and coffee and stuff, which are notes that I do often get with uh, some high proof rice. I get some dark chocolate, like you get the cocoa beans, and then you yeah, not creek. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's got the similar notes with the barrel bitterness and the vegetation turned down, but then some of the sweeter, more like- yeah, it's just kind of balanced you know, better. Turned up. It's yeah. a bit, yeah, it's a bit more balanced. And it's like, you know, 15% less, well not, no, actually I think my group's like 50%. It's still like nearly 10% lower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I this was like our first, not our first rye, it was in our <clears> first <throat> three rides. This is the first time we tried a rye. I think this was our second after, rye and we only bought it because it was yeah. rye proof. I think that's our reasoning behind it. Yeah. Because we just started liking bourbon, and well, the reason we started liking bourbon, like the little kind of entryway for us was high proof bourbon. For some reason, that helped us. <laughs> rare breed. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, <laughs> things like rare breed, especially, gets uh, they get a lot of credit for getting us into bourbon. Mm. So we're like, well, look, our rye experiences as limited as they are, they were also low proof. Let's see yeah, if yeah. kind of like the same uh, pattern continues. We'll try a high proof. And it did. Like, we genuinely enjoy this much more than the I other. I think that's uh, why we enjoyed it. this. Because, uh, th like, normally low proof rice are, like, the other way around. It's just very sweet. Yeah. Like, v almost fake or vanilla like for me notes, up front. But with, like, none of the interesting kick and challenges yeah. to it. It's or you just, get, like... It's just, like, you just get left with the bad, boring flavors. Mm. The green, like, tea notes you know, are, like, more subdued in the lower proof. Yeah. Point, where this is just flipped on its head. Um, yeah. It was nice as, like, a change up, but I don't know if... Definitely. Now that I've had more rise, I now don't think had, this yeah. is like what I remember it being. No, no, I completely agree. I think we've, I think we put that a bit higher than what it is in reality, or at least what it is now compared to when yeah. we first tried. It's dropped a few rungs. It's still but nice, but it's, it's still just, it's, it's just rough drink, to be honest. Yeah. It's it's still uh, quite enjoyable if you're ready for that kind of thing. If you're an Isla person or already a high proof bourbon or rye person, yeah, yeah, this isn't gonna like be anything new. Mm. Um, the other Templeton rye, though, we did have the four-year-old that was 40% or 43 or a low proof. That yeah. we did not enjoy whatsoever. That was just sweet and flat from memory. From memory, it was yeah. just flat tea with a little bit of uh, sugar. Mm. So um, <laughs> the proofs helped it uh, either way. I would like to know the age, but not as big a deal with American whiskey as it is with scotch. Yeah. Uh, just because of the, the climate difference, it seems to matter a bit less. Mm. But I don't know. Uh, let us know if you've got any kind of like your, of your own experiences with Templeton. We know that's a pretty controversial brand. Um, let us know about any information that we missed, any, uh, any stuff like that. Um, and let us know if there's been any changes to the way they run things. Yeah. Um, Cause I mean, we apart, bought, that was our last bottle that we bought from Templeton and it was what, a year ago? Year and a half at, le at least a year. Yeah. At least 12 months. So hopefully they've cleaned up their act a little bit, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let us know you, what you think about this one if you've tried it. Uh, otherwise, if you like this episode, let us like. We'll see future episodes from us. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you do, see you next one. Cheers. Cheers.